Hello, North Stars, and welcome to the Fall 2022 PSAT NMSQT training. You should be watching this video if you're going to be working with sophomores or juniors in a traditional paper and pencil format. You should have your manual in front of you. You will see this year that we did manuals a little bit different, and most of you are actually receiving the manuals that were sent from College Board as opposed to marked up manuals. We had some issues with printing and getting instructions correct. So I've marked up this manual. You can follow along in the video and mark yours up to get everything accurate. To begin, we're going to start on page 53 of your manual, which is part three for all proctors. You will see you're going to pick up materials in the cafeteria at uh, before 7, 10 a.m. Uh, a few things to note before test day, you need to do what you're doing right now is participate in the training. Uh, you need to take time to study the scripts, make sure you're familiar with them. Review the test procedures, which we're going to go over. If you are doing accommodated testing, you need to make sure you know and understand what accommodations you're going to be working with in your room and how to properly administer the exam for those accommodations and which script to use. Uh, if you have any questions on that, please make sure you check with me or Sarah and we will help clarify any of that. At this point, then we're going to skip the pre-administration session. You can see I've crossed that out. And we're going to go to page 59 that is right here uh, we're going to start talking about during the test so on test day you're going to assume responsibility for materials make sure the room is ready um, administer the test complete the seating chart and return the materials pretty simple in preparing the room you're going to make sure that the following information is posted uh, today's date this the the uh, school code which is 143796 i've put that in here for you uh, the school address and the testing room code. Again, I'm just highlighting some things. You need to be sure to read the entire manual and make sure you're familiar with all of these pieces. As far as accounting for test materials, you're going to have a roster. Uh, if you're in an accommodated room, you'll have a NAR. You'll get the test books, answer sheets, number two pencils. As you can see here, you're going to count the materials no less than three times after you receive them, before you distribute them and after collecting the books. That way you make sure your numbers are always accurate. If you find you're missing any test materials, please reach out to me immediately so we can get that straightened out. As admitting students to the room, you're going to either assign the seats or uh, by random or prearrangement, they do not, I repeat, do not choose their own seats. Uh, on the rosters, you'll P for present, A for absent. Um, You'll have two rosters. One will go to attendance right away, and one will stay with the room. We are going to collect any belongings that they might bring to the room, including devices. Uh, I suggest you put those in the phone caddies that are in the classrooms to keep them safe. They shouldn't be bringing backpacks or anything else, but if they do, those need to also be collected and put to the side of the room. If they brought any snacks or drinks, those need to get taken out and put under their desk because they cannot access the backpacks once the test is distributed. Uh, at the end of the exam, you can return devices, uh, but not until all testing is complete and everything has been collected and returned. Administering the test, you're going to follow tests in sequence, read the scripts exactly as they're written, maintain security, uh, reporting irregularities, and complete the seating chart on the back of the manual that's in front of you right now. Make sure you're timing accurately, make sure you're announcing it, posting it where required, Security, make sure there's always somebody in the room, always account for those materials. Uh, don't allow students to access phones or use wearable technology. That is something to be aware of. Students with smartwatches or anything like that, those also need to be put away. Another thing that we've encountered over the past couple of years is students wanting to wear AirPods or other similar devices during the exam and maybe have their phone with playing music over on the side. So you need to watch for that as well. Monitoring breaks, um, again, students are going to have put their stuff to the side so they cannot access them during the break. Uh, you're going to post the start and stop times. Students are going to take their breaks in the classroom. They do need to stay quiet because other rooms nearby may still be testing. Breaks will not all be at the exact same time. If they did bring a, a drink or a snack, like it says here, they can eat it in the room. That is the designated area. Uh, but they can't, if they left it in their backpack, sorry, they're not going to be able to access that once testing has begun. Unscheduled breaks would be anything that happens during the test. If a student needs to use the restroom, just one at a time, you need to collect their materials. 
make sure the hall monitors are keeping an eye on that as well. Irregularity report, if you have anything that's concerning, reach out to me or Sarah and we will help you with that. There is an irregularity chart on page 118 of your manual that lists some of the common irregularities, gives you some ideas how to respond to those um, that you might be able to answer some of those questions in the classroom. All right, part four then is our test day scripts. This is still for everyone, standard and accommodated. This is where we're gonna begin on test day. Uh, our students have pre-ID labels. They did not do a pre-administration. So there are some fields that we do need to fill out and complete prior to the taking of the test. And then there'll be a few fields afterward as well. So you're gonna read, as it says, the highlighted sections here. Um, it should be in your manual very clear. Question here, A and B, you're gonna read A because we are collecting personal belongings. You can skip B. Checking for prohibited items. Again, like we said, cell phones, smartwatches, wearable technology. Another thing to watch for is QWERTY keyboards. So a calculator that has a laptop type keyboard as opposed to an alpha numeric keyboard, that would not be acceptable. At this point, you're gonna distribute the answer sheets. Like we said, they do have pre-ID labels, so please make sure each student gets the answer sheet with their ID label on it. We have a couple of students who have come since those were printed and we'll need to complete all sections. If they have a student like that in your room, we'll notify you. Uh, we're gonna read part B here because we've not participated in the pre-administration session. Uh, and then when we get to the next page though, we are going to skip a few things because as I put down here, fields one and two, and then six through eight are included in the pre-ID label. So you're gonna skip the information about field one and two, you will read and have the students complete information for fields three, four, and five. And then you can skip these, thing, these fields here for fields six, seven, and eight. At this point, then you're gonna distribute the, text, the test books. Um, and then you're going to make sure this is important here that the students complete the information on the back of the test book, which is the school code, their name, and the testing room, um, because we give these books back to the students in December. If they don't complete this in your room, they don't get their book with any markings or notes that they took. Um, they don't get that back. So it's important that you make sure you have them do that. You're gonna continue on reading the highlighted sections. They're gonna complete the certification statement. Uh, and then they're going to complete test book information. If you are in one of the pre-recorded audio rooms, this is where you're going to stop this video or pause and move to the next section of the video that pertains to you. All other accommodations are going to continue from here. All right. We're going to next complete field A, which is the form code, and then field B, which is the test ID. These are going to be important that you get have students fill those out and fill those out completely. Uh, because this is how that we make sure that their test gets scored correctly. Please know there's information here if you're a human reader. Um, again, at this point, then make sure the students check those codes to make sure that they are right and accurate so that we know that they've done that right. Testing room code, we are using those. That's on the, uh, the sheet that's in your box, which will tell you your testing room code. For most rooms, it is the room number. Uh, the only difference is some of the rooms that perhaps don't have a room number. At this point now, we are going to proceed to the appropriate script. So if you are in a standard testing room, you're going to stay with the video. We're going to move on to standard time script one. If you are in an accommodated room, you can pause and move to the appropriate part of the video to watch that. So continuing on. Script one, standard time. So this is for any students that have regular time or if a student has, as you can see here, extended time on math only, because that's gonna be a combination of scripts, a student that has breaks as needed or extended breaks, or some of these other smaller accommodations here, which are a little less common. Um, they're still gonna use script one. You're gonna continue to read the highlighted section you're gonna make sure that you complete and fill out start and stop times in the book as well as posting it to the board. Um, and then in addition to that, like I said, walk around and check, make sure you complete the seating chart on the back of the manual. Section, our first want test is 60 minutes. 
you'll have a five minute break. Second test read, writing and language is 35 minutes, similar and, or, um, test start and stop time here. The, at this point then, if you have a student that's got extended time for math only, you're gonna move on to script three. Everybody else is going to continue here. So that's only for math time extended, you move on. Everybody else just continue here. You're gonna move into the math test, no calculator, which is 25 minutes. Again, reading through the highlighted sections, recording start and stop time. We've got another five minute break here. And then test four, section four, math test calculator, which is 45 minutes, reading the highlighted sections, marking start and stop time here, and continuing through to that point. All right, so at this point then, we've hit really the end of the exam. There are some specific format instructions that uh, are we'll talk about for those people. If you are in a standard room, at this point, you're gonna proceed to page 105. So you're gonna need to proceed to the next part of the video. All right, welcome to script three, time and a half. This is gonna be for any students that you have in your room that have 50% extended time for the entire exam. Or if you've got a student who has 50% math only, then you would have followed script one through the first two sections and you'll be joining us for sections three and four in script three. So this test is broken up a little bit differently as it does have some extra breaks built in. So for example, section one reading test, you can see this 45 minutes, five minute break, and then an additional 45 minutes. That means there are two spots in here where you're gonna record start and stop time. You're gonna make sure you record those not only in the book, but also on the board so the students can see. You're gonna make sure you're walking around, monitoring what's happening and completing the seating chart on the back of this manual as well. Everything else is the same as standard time. You're reading the shaded sections. The only difference is the extra time involved. Um, section two, the writing is 53 minutes. Record stop, start to stop time here. Break at the end. Section three, math test calculator. So this is where if you have students that have extra time math only, you're gonna be joining in. You'll have taken a break after the section two of the standard time, just like here. And then you're going to join in for the math test. No calculator, 38 minutes, recording here, five minute break here. And then we move on to the last section, section four, math test with calculator, 34 minutes, five minute break, and an additional 34 minutes. So the two spots to record the time. At this point, then once you get done, then you're going to proceed to 105 for the collection of test books, uh, completion of the answer sheet, and dismissal. So you can now move on to that part of the video. All right, script four, double time. This is for students who have 100% extended time for the entire exam, or if they have it for math only, just for the last two sections. If, if it's math only, you're gonna have followed script one for sections one and two, reading and writing. And then you'll join this script four after the break between two and three to do the 100% time for math. All right, so the way this script is gonna proceed is reading test, first test, since it is double time, there's 60 minutes, a five minute break and 60 minutes to complete the test. Um, you, again, you do have to allow that entire time to expire, give the students that entire time. Let them know that from the beginning, they're gonna have that entire time, so pace themselves. Uh, you're gonna record start and stop time in two different spots for the two different 60 minute blocks. Uh, make sure you post that not only in the book here, but also on the board. Make sure you're walking around, checking to make sure they're in the right section. And this is a good time to complete the seating chart on the back of the book. After that, then you'll have a five minute break. You'll move on to the writing and language test. This is just one 70 minute section that you, you'll get through that. Record it here, a five minute break then before the math section. So this is where students that have 100% for math only will be joining in this section after that five minute break. This is one 50 minute section recorded here, five minute break after that. And then we go to the math test with the calculator. Notice part three was no calculator. So part four with the calculator, 45 minutes, five minute break and 45 minutes. So we're breaking that one in half. 
again, two different spots to record, five minute break between. Once you get to the end of this section, then you have completed the exam. You're gonna to go to page 105 for the collection of the test books, completion of some more sections and dismissal of the students. So you can now proceed to that part of this video. Script five, pre-recorded audio. Well, so there's only a couple of you watching this, uh, but this is important that you're gonna go from earlier where I pointed out in the first part of the video to this section. And students will be filling things out a little bit differently here than in the standard. So this is for only for students who have pre-recorded audio. These students do get 100% extended time for the exam and they will test over two days. These are the only students doing the PSAT and MSQT that test over two days. Um, we are not using flash drives. We are using the streaming application. Uh, so you're going to follow that. I crossed off where it says flash drives. You can do that in your manual as well. So you'll be reading the instructions that are in the highlighted sections. You do have to complete some test information here, uh, such as the field A form code and field B test ID. It is important that they do complete these and get them accurate uh, because this is um, how they get their tests scored properly. So it is important to do that make sure they check that part of it as well. We are using a testing room code. So field D is gonna be that. Uh, that's going to be probably your room number. It's indicated on the sheet that was in your, your box with your materials. You're gonna explain the, the audio navigation, uh, make sure that they've got that um, full understanding of what to do. And then you're gonna get into actually the test administration as you proceed through here. Uh, before I go through that though, I just wanna make you aware uh, ben Wagoner and Tana simon Selly are going to be available as tech support during the exam. So they'll be coming into the rooms to check, make sure you're getting going and help you uh, and assist you with whatever needs you might have. Uh, Sarah and Heather will also be available to assist and help out as needed with this, with the technical, technical aspects. We're going to have extra Chromebooks available and we will have headphones available for the students. Please note the students have to use corded headphones. They cannot use AirPods or something that's uh, Bluetooth. Uh, so again, that's why we're going to have some extra ones available that they'll be able to plug into their Chromebooks. They do need to bring their own Chromebooks. Hopefully they've got them fully charged and uh, th th everything should be all set. They do need to record, uh, log out and log in through the kiosk and find the appropriate app. All right. Once you start the exam, again, it's double time. So at 120, they get 120 minutes for it is broken in half with a five minute break in the middle. So you're going to record that start and stop two different times in here, the two 60 minute sections. You're also going to put it on the board. This is also where you're going to make sure you're walking around. And this is a good time to complete the seating chart on the back of the manual that's right in front of you. Uh, you have a five minute break after that. And then we're going to go on to section two, which is the writing and language test. This also is broken in half a 58 and a 57 with a five minute break in there. Um, you're gonna record that again, two different spots with a five minute break between. You'll get to the end. This is where you're gonna collect your test materials and dismiss students. That is the end of day one. Um, on day two, you're gonna begin here. So you gotta do a little bit more preparation, get them all set, get them logged back into the exam. And uh, we will have cards as I see this SSD number up here. We will have cards that have their SSD numbers there so that you don't have to worry about looking them up. So we'll have them there for you in accessible. Uh, day two begins, you get two exams. You get the math test note calculator and the math test calculator. So 50 minutes for the first exam. And then the second exam is 90 minutes broken into half two 45 minute sections. Again, you're gonna record everything in the book here and once you get then to the end of this section, you're going to proceed to the end of the exam and the dismissal information to make sure that we can finish completing information on the exam itself. So you can now pause and go to that part of the video.
All right, welcome everybody to the uh, after the test and dismissal portion of the exam. So at this point, you have com completed all testing, all four sections of the exam are done. Uh, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to collect the test books and other test materials. So you're going to walk around the room. You're going to make sure you collect a, a test book from every student. You should collect them in the order that you pass them out so that you're getting them all back um, pr properly. Uh, as you collect those, please follow the instructions here, but very importantly, check to make sure fields, again, it's not one through eight uh, because the, not all of those needed to be completed, but it is going to be fields three, four, and five that have been completed. It, one, two, and six through eight are on the label. Also important to make sure, though, that the form code field A and the test ID field C are completed. I'm sorry, field B. Field C is the serial number. We don't have to complete that. There is no serial number. All right, so we do have additional information to complete. All students need to do that. It's not gonna take much longer. So we're gonna follow instruction C for students who have not completed uh, all of the information. And we're gonna follow through that. It's really pretty simple. They're gonna complete fields through nine through 13, which is their address. Uh, it's just important information to make sure we get on there so that uh, College Board can contact them especially if they happen to become a national merit finalist. Uh, that way they have that information available. Um, field 14 as well is their ID number. It's going to be their school ID. That way we can sort the materials properly. Uh, we are going to skip fields 15 through 23. It is actually very important that the students do not answer these because these are survey questions and uh, mobile number and things along those lines that we do not have parental permission for them to do so skip 15 through 23 that is important so once they've once they've got their address and their id number on there uh then then you're done at that point then you're going to be able to collect the answer sheet instruction booklets uh you're gonna be able to collect the answer sheets from everyone make sure you get one from everyone that they're not inserted in the test book that there's two separate piles uh, make sure you have one for every student and verify all of that after the students leave the room, then it is going to be important that you take care of the last things. If you do have a student who was able to write their answers in their book, you do need to transcribe those. So that's there. Um, finishing up, then it's important that you've completed the seating chart, uh, irregular report. If necessary, work with me or Sarah and we will help you with that. Um, make sure that everybody's been marked as present or absent. Make sure you've got all your materials and bring everything then back to the cafeteria uh, where we'll, we'll have everything. Um, so just to show you then a couple of things, there are some timing charts in your book to help you with this. Uh, acceptable calculators are listed and the uh, irregularity chart on page 118, as we mentioned before. And then finally at the very end on the back is the seating chart that uh, everyone needs to complete. As you can see, we're putting names uh, similar to the uh, sample uh, in completing that, make sure you fill all of this information out um, and turn that in as well. Thank you very much for your dedication and your uh, response and your work with our students to get this done and uh, taking the time to watch this video.